Sat on the last pew, a heart full of questions and a world torn in two, bearing the weight of years of regret. She listened to the preacher when he stood up and said, If you're somewhere between doubt. been years since she found amazing grace. It's been a long journey, but each battle she's faced has proven God faithful time and again, and the chance to tell others who are right where she's been. Somewhere between 
was wandering along life's road, feeling so burdened and so lost. But then I met the Savior who died on that old cross. He changed my life completely since then. I've never been the same. No other day has been like that day when I called on Jesus' name. That, day. that wonderful day when Jesus came down to me. It was the day my Well, amen. We'll come on in and have church. Glad everybody came out to the Lord's house tonight. Look at that crowd back there. <laughs> I seen you trying to break away from the conversation. I saw it. Amen. Um, be in prayer for a music director still here at our church, still in prayer about that. Uh, maybe the Lord's getting us to a place where we are really ready to worship before he sends one. Not sure. Um, but we, it's something we pray for, and we just want God to move in that. And I talked to, to a brother this past week, and he said, you know, it could be that God is getting us to a place where we are ready for one. I thought, hmm, well, that, that speaks volumes. So, Lord, help us get our hearts ready for worship. Um, June 30th, um, uh, that's already... That happened this morning, actually. A youth camp, Jekyll Island, July 8th through the 11th. Today is the last day to sign up, so not sure. I'm sure. I hope everybody signed up for that. Um, any other announcements? There was something else. Yep. If you got any bills or receipts for Vacation Bible School that's been bought, uh, make sure you get that Miss Tiny. Um, so she can get paid, and, and try to keep your receipt. That's a big, big, big deal. Um, also, the uh, the uh, rodeo's coming, the uh, Swamp Fest Rodeo that's coming up they have every year in August. Um, if you're going to go to it and buy tickets, uh, you can also do that through the church. The church is sending uh, $1,800 to purchase Bibles through uh, for the SCA. SCA is getting kind of attached to that, so we send $1,800 to SCA. Well, in turn, we get tickets for you know, for every 15 bucks, we get another, a free ticket. So we'll have a bunch of tickets to give away. And um, so it may be a way to knock out two birds with one stone and give more money for more Bibles. So if you're thinking about going to that rodeo, uh, let me know, and uh, we'll try to do it that way. And um, But the big goal for us is getting uh, every eighth grader in uh, the, this tri-county area Bibles. And they, they gave them to athletes this past year. Their goal next time is to give them to all the kids, not just athletes. So... Um, that's a big plus. Uh, any other announcements? I think Brother Mike made it. Whew. Amen. Um, 
um, prayer requests. Don't forget, remember Herbert Sweat, Finley Cook, John Sartain, Betty Mae Johns. Pray for Ryder Minchu, uh, Sam Herndon, Sharon Thornton, Betty May, Vance Wilson, Sandy Yarborough, Bean Johns, Billy Miles, uh, Mr. Hubert Boyd, uh, Kenny Cravey, and Keith Canner. I think it was Canner. Any others? Walter Shepard. Yes. Amen. Anybody with any unspoken prayers tonight? Let's remember to pray for each other. Pray for families. Listen, um, while things might be okay in your life and in your family, um, things could be completely, the world can be upside down in somebody else's. So remember to pray for each other. A lot of times people put on happy faces when things aren't really happy. So uh, pray for each other and lift each other up because there's some, some of your brothers and sisters in Christ are hurting right now. And um, just keep them in your prayers. Um, any others before we pray? Let's pray. Lord, we love you and thank you, God, for tonight, for your goodness and your mercy you've shown us throughout this week with Vacation Bible School, all the children that came. Lord, over 200 was here almost every night. We thank you for the, the adults, close to 100 uh, volunteers, and just so thankful for the soul that was saved this week. And just thank you, God, that you're in our midst and there's work going on. Help us, Lord, to, to get in line with you and what you're doing. Help us to put the, the, your word first and uh, do, our, do our best to, um, to, to swear allegiance to that and put you first in our lives. God, we, we love you and you know you love us because you sent Jesus down a cross for our sins 2,000 years ago so that we could get to where you are. So, God, tonight we're just so thankful. And uh, we lift up those that are hurting in our church, Lord, those that have issues that are going on in their lives right now that they won't speak about. God, there's so many things. I just pray, Lord, you'll bless each and every one. And uh, just pray, God, that um, all the prayer requests that have been mentioned, Lord, that you'll touch. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I was fitting to tell you all to come up. Please stand and worship with us.
chapter 10, first of all, Deuteronomy chapter 10. You ever think about the Pledge of Allegiance? You know, do you ever, you ever think about that? We, we say the Pledge of Allegiance weekly here at church. Uh, on Wednesday nights with our young people, our children are here, we teach them the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. We teach them the Pledge of Allegiance to the Christian flag. And we teach them the Pledge of Allegiance to the Bible. And, 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 and listen, we're not raising up a society of drones or anything like that. We're just trying to teach them that it's okay to, sta to stand for something 
and, uh, and be faithful to something and, and pledge allegiance to it. Um, the uh, the uh, Christian flag is something that, that we, uh, we we've actually have a, a new flagpole coming for right out here. Um, hopefully it'll be up here in the near future. Uh, we've, we had to have it built. Uh, we didn't want a regular flag. We want a big flag. So it's on a 40-foot pole, and uh, I've already got the flag for it. It's, ten, it's six foot by 10 foot. But I, I was told that we, we need to get a Christian flag as well. So I, I blew it. So I'm after a Christian flag now. So anybody want a Georgia State flag under there somewhere? Tell me now. So I'm going to okay. So but anyway, we need to get our flags for our flagpole. Now, in that same project, um, we're doing some electrical over here to the corner. We know that there's power over there. Brother David found the power wiring all over there, so we may have a little project going over here in the corner. Coming up here in the near future, we may need a little bit of help. But we, we do those things. We put up flags, and we, we do that to let people know what we are, whose we are, and what we stand for, and what we won't stand for. Um, and I think that sometimes we, when we think about our pledges, we say, well, I pledge allegiance to the United States. That means, that means I'm going to stand for the things of the United States. I might not agree with everybody and everything, but now I stand for the betterment of the United States of America. And, uh, and, and Guatemala, they can stand for the betterment of Guatemala. And Japan, they can stand for the betterment of Japan. I'm going to stand for the betterment of the United States of America. Not against them, I'm just for America, you see. Um, and, and we have, sometimes have this passive idea that, um, that we shouldn't be so jubilant about our patriotism. Oh, yes, we should. Oh, yes, we should. And, and listen, I, I want to make sure people know what I am. I want to be the same way as a Christian today, especially just coming to the end of what, the, what America does, uh, uh, world wants to call Pride Month. Listen, that, 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 that rainbow don't mean pride. It, just, it was a promise from, from God how we wouldn't destroy the earth again by flood. So listen, they call it pride, and that's straight out of the mouth of the devil because that's what it stands for. That's what Satan met up with Eve for. The very first thing he said to her, will you surely die? It began with pride that man could be their own God. And that's kind of what we're facing today. People have this idea that they can be their own God. That's why they don't want patriotism. That's why they don't want people getting together and, and forming an idea. There, there's a mess in this country. And you all know it. You all see it. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 10. I'm going to read a verse here just, just to keep you seated if you would. The Bible says in verse 10, chapter 10, verse 12, And now Israel, what doth the Lord God require of thee? Now, if, if I'm a Christian, I'm, now listen, we're looking back at the Israelites, and, and we're talking about the Jewish nation. We're not talking about today so much, but the Bible is good for all days. What God required in those days are good today. I, I believe that, so, so these things that you look here in verse 10 are still good for us today. They didn't pass away. So the Bible says here, and now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. First of all, to fear the Lord thy God. So the idea that we ought to, ought to be fearful of God ought to uh, be natural. If you put God in his rightful place, uh, there'll be rightful fear. Today we have this idea that we can somehow be in charge of everything, that we're in control of everything. And quite sadly, we're, we're in charge of very little. You might be in charge of some things on this earth, and you may have decided that you can dictate what you do, but you'll do it for a very short time. Hey, the Lord's going to come back one day, and he's going to carry out his plans. I'm thankful today that I'm part of the kingdom of heaven. I'm thankful today that I stand here, and uh, I've, I've given my life to Jesus, and uh, I want to pray about what he would have me do on a daily basis. So when you give the reins to the Lord, listen, there's a lot of peace in that. There's a lot of joy in that. I don't, I don't feel like that somehow or another I've, I've given up uh, the rights to my life because I serve God. Not at all. Matter of fact, I not only have rights to this life, I have a right to the next life. Woohoo! Hey, listen, they, they something come with the they something come with that program. It's when I swore allegiance to my heavenly father, when I accepted him into my heart and I prove it every day by the faith that I have in Christ Jesus and what he did for me. Listen, it's not something, it's not passive for me. It's active. It's something that I want to do every single day is show that I, my allegiance falls with my heavenly Savior. So, so my, uh, first of all, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. Secondly, to walk in all his ways. Listen, if you want to find out what you ought to be doing in life, if you want to figure out what your day ought to, uh, ought to be, a, what you ought to be a part of, you ought to be walking in God's ways. Well, brother Ray, how do I know, how do I know what God's ways are? 
They're in the book. Listen, it all goes back to knowing what the book says. It all goes back to reading God's word and finding God's word for your life. I need to walk in, did say run in his ways? You know, when you're running in something, a lot of times you don't get to see what's around you. But if when you take a good walk through there, listen, you can see what's around you when you're having a walk. You ever, you ever rode through a place and never really, never really saw, especially if you're driving. If, to me, going in Cage Cove is like one of the worst things could ever happen to me. I know some of y'all like Cage Cove. I don't. Listen, I don't, I don't like the drive in there. It's about a 40-minute drive, about five miles an hour, and, and it's the same picture for, listen, I know some of y'all mad with me, and y'all judging me right now. But listen, it ain't worth the ride in there. We got old buildings at my house. You all right? But listen, some of y'all are like, no, I don't like that, brother. I ain't, I ain't, I'm putting my hand down. I ain't for that. Don't aim any. Don't aim any. Listen, what, what I'm saying is, 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 is listen, you see every broke limb and dead tree root as you go in there because it's a slow ride. Now, if we could fly on in there and get to the end, I'd probably be happy about that ride. But I wouldn't see anything. You know, I think that's what God's trying to refer to here. He said, he said walk. He didn't say run, walk in all his ways. Take a walk. Sometimes we need to slow down in our lives and recognize what God's trying to do for us. Sometimes we need to slow down in our lives and say, Lord, what would you have me do? Sometimes we need to take a, take a minute and just take a walk outside. Uh, this past week I've been busy, and yesterday I was busy, and I, I was able to go over to Mom and Daddy's place and trying to, you know, the you know, Lord took them home, and uh, uh, they're together now. And so I, I think about that, and I'm happy about that. But what I'm not happy about is, uh, is, is their, the state of their place, just because nobody's living there. And we can, we, we, listen, me and John, we can cut and put up and do this and that, but listen, when it all boils down to it, nobody lives there. Listen, it's just, now, now it's just, it's nobody lives there anymore, so it's hard to keep up. It, it's hard to, so yesterday, I, I was there working and mowing, Jonathan mowed the day before, and I finished up some mowing, and there was a spray some Roundup, and it took me a few minutes, I, I just took a walk around the place, and I remembered all the times that I was little. And all the little t- I, I can mark every, sp- well, not every place because I got a bunch of them, but all the places I got whippings. You know, the tree I hid behind, the mom was looking for me, yeah. I, there's a water hose spigot my little brother sprayed her with um, because she was afraid he'd get to her and she'd whip him. So he kept her at bay with the water hose. Great story behind that right there. She beat him like a wet mule when she got in him. Uh, but he, she was wet when she did it. Uh, but, but I thought about it. I was there the whole time. I just took a walk. It, 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 I didn't hurry over there and hurry through and get it done. And leave. No, I took a walk. Listen, I think sometimes we ought to take a walk with the Lord. Hey, sometimes we need to take a minute and just take, a, take time to say, Lord, I just want to take a walk with you today. I don't want to run through today. I don't want to run through my prayer time today. I don't want to run through my Bible study. Lord, I want to slow down and take a walk. I might not get but one verse today, Lord, but I want it to be meaningful. Lord, I want to slow down. When's the last time you slowed down and thought about what a great country you live in? Well, we see all this foolishness and all the ugliness and the, the sadness that we see that our country is involved with. But listen, I got to tell you, man, uh, God, God really blessed us when he allowed us to be American citizens. And we ought to be thankful for that. We ought to be thankful. And, I, and every one of you ought to vote. A lot of people died for the right for us to vote. And if you ain't voting, shame on you. You ought to be out there voting. The Bible says not only should we what's required, thee, but to fear the Lord, to walk in all his ways, uh, but to love him and, and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God. We're to love God and to, and to serve God. I don't think a Christian's happy unless they're serving. Amen. Now you say, I, I, listen, I know there's a lot of people that come in and out of this church on Sundays and Wednesdays that, uh, that may be church members, may not be church members, not doing anything. And, and they just, they're just waiting for that next closest. It's, it's hard to get close to the Lord if you're not serving somewhere. Listen, I, I believe you've got to have your finger in it. I believe you've got to have your hand in the pot. I believe you've got to be involved somewhere. And it, it's not just at this church, but there's a lot of people that, that come here that are involved in ministries and other places. Praise the Lord. That's good stuff. But I believe a Christian ought to be serving. You ought to be serving God somewhere. And when you find yourself serving, you'll find yourself tired. Anybody ever grown weary in the gospel? Listen, I ain't never gotten weary uh, of the gospel, but I've been weary from it. Whew. There's a difference. I've, I, listen, I, I've never wanted to get to a place where I was tired of serving Jesus, no, but I've been tired of serving Jesus. 
And there's a difference. You see, we, we, the Bible tells us to, to serve the Lord and to, and to love God. And when we do those things, I believe God shows up in our lives. The Bible goes on to say, to serve the Lord with our God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Not just with our heart. Do you recognize when you accepted Christ as your Savior, you got a new address, spiritually speaking? When you accepted Christ as your Savior, your destination then is sealed into another place. You say, Brother Ray, sealed according to Scripture. The Bible says I've been sealed until the day of redemption. Meaning, meaning I, was, I was put in that bag. I used to work at uh, TG&Y when I was a boy. And I uh, worked there at the, in the back. And we had, we had layaway. Everybody remember what layaway was? Where you go and get all that stuff you knew you couldn't afford. You're going to pay payments on. It was, first, it was first credit cards. You know what I mean? So you'd go in there and every month. You'd, you'd start putting stuff on layaway. Man, there was so many stuff. We had racks of bin and storage of layaway stuff. And, 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 but listen, you got that thing, and you, you, uh, they sealed it up with staples. They put it in a bin right there, put a certain number on it, a certain bin. And when the owner of that stuff had paid the price of it, they could come get that thing out of layaway. When I got saved and realized that's what Jesus Christ had did for me, he'd paid a price for me I couldn't pay. I couldn't afford it. He could afford it. Listen, when I realized he paid a price for me and he owned me and he, he'll come get me one day when this, when this thing's over with, this thing's done, he's going to come get me one day. Why? Because I'm his. I've been sealed. I belong to him. And when this thing's over, then I'm going to go be with him. Listen, there's some excitement in that. It just it, it pales everything else. Everything else just pales to that. When I think about the fact that at some point in the future, I get to be with God. Everything else just falls short of that. It doesn't matter about championships. It doesn't matter about, about the births of children or this thing or that thing or this great trip. Listen, everything else pales when, when I really think about the thing that matters the most, where I'm going to spend eternity, and I know that mine's been sealed until the day of redemption. What a blessing. What a blessing to know I'm saved. Are y'all right? Listen, to know you're saved and saved until the day of redemption. That's what my soul does. See, my soul wants, wants to love God with all my heart. It, my soul wants to do things. It wants to do it even in the days my heart don't want to. The Bible tells us our heart can be deceitful. You've got to be careful. The, the heart is kind of that thing you've got to work with. You've got to make it align. You've got to make sure your heart's right. Uh, people always say, well, I'm just going to pray and make sure my heart's right. That's, that's a good prayer. Or, or sometimes people say, well, God knows my heart. <laughs> yeah, he does. Better be careful. God does know your heart. When we think about our pledges of allegiance, do we mean them? You know, I like the Pledge of Allegiance to the Christian flag. It, it states this, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One brotherhood uniting all Christians in service and love. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll pledge allegiance to that. Hey, I'll say I'm in that crowd. Why? Because it means something. Listen, I get thinking about our pledge to the Bible. What, what? I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Yeah, I'll pledge allegiance to that. I'm all for that. And, and listen, um, our, our pledge of allegiance, I, I'm kind of getting to the point, our pledge of allegiance a little bit different. You know, does anybody know the, the, the history of the Pledge of Allegiance or, or how long it's been around? 1892, the first Pledge of Allegiance really came into being. Uh, I got a little excerpt here I'm going to read. I'll pull it offline. You can find it. Um, Daniel Sharp Ford, the owner of a magazine called Youth's Companion, was uh, on a crusade to put American flags in every school in the country. He sensed that the U.S. needed a boost of patriotism uh, keep in mind, not even 30 years before the Civil War had been raging, national unity was a fragile concept. It was just past the, the Civil War. As a part of the campaign, Sharp gave an assignment to a member of his staff, Francis J. Bellamy, remember that name, Francis J. Bellamy, who was an author, a minister, a, a socialist minister, by the way, um, who was an author, a minister, and an advocate of the tenets of Christian socialism, Sharp asked Bellamy to compose a Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Bellamy wrote it. It was published in the magazine. Never had one before, but it was published then in the magazine. Um, 
It didn't take long for the plays to become wildly popular, even omnipresent. It was everywhere. At schools, at campgrounds, at public gatherings, in Congress, people routinely faced the flag and pledged their allegiance to it. Um, because inher inherently, there's something physically awkward about people simply standing in place, their arms hanging limp by their sides, staring at a flag and reciting a pledge. It was decided that devising a salute, devising a salute would be appropriate. The first, I'm going to say this to you, the first Pledge of Allegiance stated this, 1892. This is what Mr. Bellamy come up with. I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Uh, 1892, that's what the Pledge of Allegiance was. 1923, um, it changed a little bit at this time. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the Republic, which stands one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 1954, in response to the communist threat of the times, President Eisenhower encouraged Congress to add the words under God, creating the 31-word pledge that we have today. Um, so let me finish this up. Um, instructions for carrying out the salute were printed on the pages of the use companion. The gesture came to be called the Bellamy Salute. Anybody ever heard the Bellamy Salute? This, this, listen, we got some weird facts in the United States. From way back. You know what the Bellamy Salute was? Whenever they give the Pledge of Allegiance, they would start it, and they'd say, I pledge allegiance, and they got their salute up, and when they said to the flag, they would hold their hand out like this, to the flag, and they would say, uh, uh, you know, the United States of America, and that said to give the flag. You know when they stopped that? I mean, in history, Italy was, was communist fascist along with Germany. And they took on the role that we used or the, or the, or the symbolism we used. But listen, uh, 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 just pictures were flying back and forth across the, across the Atlantic Ocean of them to Hitler, to the Italian fascist. So America stopped doing it that way. So now, now we hold our hand over our heart. Watch this. The Bellamy salute consisted of each person, a man, a woman, a child, extended his arm, blah, blah, blah. I read that already. Um, <clears throat> read that, read that, read that. Okay. The, wor the, the wording of the Pledge of Allegiance may or not be changed again in centuries to come, but it's a pretty safe bet that the Bellamy salute is never coming back. Um, uh, w uh, once ubiquitous and unquestioned, it's become faded and mostly forgotten bit of history. All because seven, uh, 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 several Decembers ago, a solution to a quandary, a quandary no one could have anticipated when the pledge was written, was formalized. They said, they said you, you lower that stiff arm, and you bend those elbows, and you direct that palm right over your heart, and you place the United States of America. You know, we're the only one who does it that way, I believe. I mean, you, you might look it up and find different, but I couldn't think of another or find another place that did it quite like we do. And, and a lot of pledges pledge to people. We pledge to an idea that God created this place and gave it to us to spread the word of God. Hey, listen, I think we're in the greatest country in the world. I know there's a lot of problems, and I wish there was a lot of things I could change by just signing some document, but I know I can't. But listen, we live in, we live in a world that's in turmoil right now. You, you better be glad you don't live in China. You better be glad God didn't have you born to some folks uh, in, maybe in Argentina and some of those places down there or, or over in Russia or, or, or how about... Czechoslovakia, or those places where war is being torn apart. And think, listen, you ought, to be, you ought to be thankful for the people who have fought and died so that you can stay home and complain. Lord, help us. Help us recognize what we've pledged to. I'm going to ask everybody if you would, please stand with me to your feet. We're going to say our pledge of allegiance to our flag. If you would. It's right over there on the corner of the wall. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord, we love you and we thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, you are worthy of all the praise and adoration that we can muster here today. God, I pray and ask you to bless us as we continue with these meetings today, Lord, as we gather with all the people that's going to come out here tonight, Lord, uh, uh, to be part of fireworks. I pray, Lord, the rain stay away just enough, if it be your will, Lord. We just pray, God, as we come here and recognize what, a, what an awesome country we live in, the Lord, that you gave us, and, Lord, what, what an awesome facility we have, Lord, that you gave us, and, and Lord, what awesome uh, a comfort we have, God, that you gave us. Lord, let us love you with all our heart and all our soul. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. 
in just a few minutes, we're going to head out. And I think there's a little bit of food in the back and maybe a little bit of pizza, maybe some hot dogs. And we're going to get ready for a crowd of people that's going to come to our church. And most of this is our people in here. Um, let's don't miss this opportunity to witness and let people know that there's a church home if they need one. There's a lot of people that's going to come to our church tonight that don't go to church anywhere. Go, go out and see them. Listen, we got popsicles back there to pass away, uh, to pass out. We've got, we've got bottles of water. We've got little coolers that we're going to use. If some of you want to use some of those to do that with. Um, but we have all that here available if you want to. We've, we've made ministry easy for you tonight. We've invited them here. We don't have to go anywhere for them. They're going to pull up in the parking lot on our property, and we don't have to do anything for them. Tonight is the time you can show not only yourself, but God, that you have pledged allegiance to him. And you appreciate the sacrifice that Christ made. You see, for every pledge that people make to something, a sacrifice generally has been made that makes it worth having. You think about this country and all the people that's died. Yeah, I'll stand behind that crowd. When I think about what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago, yeah, I, I pledge allegiance to my Savior. And, and Lord, help me to keep it. Listen, Lord, Lord, help me to stay strong. There's people around us today that are hurting. There's people in your congregation that are struggling tonight. I don't want to lift those up. I don't want, listen, I don't want to come to church and put on a, a false face every week and say, well, everything's good, everything's happy, everybody's going to be good. Sometimes it's not that way. And sometimes we need to slow down to a walk and pray for each other and lift each other up and make sure, make sure that folks aren't getting stepped over for the sake of just, just continuing on with the ministry. This is the ministry, loving on each other, loving on each other. Before we go out to minister to these folks, I want to ask us all to meet up here and pray. Because I think it's important that you don't have to come up here. You can pray right, right where you're at. But let's, let's, let's begin to pray for all the people that come here tonight. It's a big thing. It's, it's, it's just not something simple that we're just going to laugh through and get it. No, no, there's a lot of people going to come here. But if, if this rain holds off and, and the weather's okay, there's going to be a lot of people come here. They're coming to a church. So we get, we get to go out there and be Christians in front of them. Do it. Show them what it's like to be a Christian. Show them what it's like to serve Jesus. Brother, if you would, play us a song up there right now. If you'd like to come, please stand. If you'd like to come and pray with us, please come and pray. Let's pray for our community. Let's pray for our country. Let's pray for the people that, that are in our military that are even, even today somewhere serving, you know, and, and, and wondering what it's all about. Is it worth it? And, and just pray that God gives us strength to, to continue to stick to the stuff and take that daily ministry walk. was given to a soldier in a land so far from home to climb the hill meant death was surely waiting determined he decided to press on in his mind he pictured people living in freedom that he would pay his life a sacrifice by his own choosing but oh what a victory that day he took the view a perfect soldier he took the coming tonight. It's a little bit different night. We're looking forward to, to going out and um, ministering to people as they get here. We don't just close up and go home now. Now it's time to be busy. But I got to order a little bit of business to do right before you leave. We have some, a family that wants to join our church 
And uh, Drew and Jessica and Hannah and Jones would like to be members of our church. What would be the church's pleasure? We can't get enough, Brother Drew. I, no, I'm just kidding. Do I hear a second? All those in favor respond by saying aye. All opposed, amen. I was talking with them this, earlier this past week. And, you know, they've been teaching Sunday school for a couple of years. I, uh, I hope you all are okay with that. I mean, they're members now, so you can't hardly say anything. But, um, somebody, some, uh, uh, Brother Drew asked me about that when he first started. He said, well, we're not members. I said, well, if anybody complains, they can teach. Amen. You all right? Nobody complains. So anyway, we're so glad to have them as members here at our church. And uh, my prayer is that now we spend time fellowshipping. We got 30, 40 minutes before we do fireworks. Some of those guys have got to do some work out there. There's hot dogs in the back and some pizza. So uh, let's just have a good time together. Anybody have anything to say before we dismiss? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, again, we love you and thank you, God, for this time together, for your uh, 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 beauty and what we see today, God. It's rained and... Lord, now it's not raining. Lord, I don't know what's, what's going to happen in the next hour, God, but if it be your will, I pray, Lord, we'll be able to minister to these folks that are coming. Help us, Lord, to, to reach out and show the love that you've shown us to other people. Help us, Lord, to be a church where people want to come, hear the word of God, hear truth, and, Lord, uh, change their lives to what that truth means. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.